Hey everybody, this is Claire, and this is Small Joyful Things. As always, I've got thrift stores or estate sales, or sometimes I buy things from Craigslist, and I'm always looking for interesting things that I think you guys might like, or things that I want to find out more about. And then I bring them home, try and find out as much as I can about them, and then tell you guys about them. So, here's what I've got today. I have a vase. I've got kind of a nice one or whatever, because this one is Japanese, and it is moriage. Which is um, basically you can see this, this 3D effect or whatever. We'll, we'll get into that, but it is unfortunately slightly dirty and difficult to clean. I'm afraid because it's like these raised elements are definitely raised. These raised elements are quite delicate, and it is quite easy to just crack them right off. You can see that there used to be a bird there, which has long since been lost. But what we've got here is. This really nice scene of like islands and the palm trees and the the pagodas and I'm not entirely sure what that's supposed to be but I'm going to just take a wild guess and say maybe it's a lighthouse. Yeah, <laughs> so palm trees and coconuts and these nice little islands and obviously the waves and the birds and the birds go all the way around. And it's also got a hole and says made in Japan <laughs> and it has this nice gilt rim on the top which is has taken a little bit of wear there, just a little bit. And I'm actually not going to leave it, I'm going to actually put it up like that because I don't want to just leave it down and like roll around the place. Anyway, let's me measure it up. It is about, it's kind of hard to guess here, like five and a quarter inches across. And check the height. About five and a half inches high. So I bought this in a, in a thrift store for six dollars and basically I bought it because I immediately picked up and knew that it was Japanese moriage which is the style this 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 raised design and I thought this is probably one of the better pieces that I've seen. Again I live in Vancouver it has a very high Asian population you'd think I'd see more kind of interesting Asian kind of ceramics and glass and what have you and to be honest I do but a lot of what I see is kind of really kind of crappy cheap stuff. Um, I have seen a few pieces of moriage before. Unfortunately, they're usually damaged or just in very bad quality. And I generally just like pass them by because I just like, I've been kind of waiting around to see if I could find a piece of moriage that is actually worth talking about. And I think this definitely is. This one just, it has a lot of small details that kind of just like, I think this is probably a little bit better made than the, the, the rubbishy stuff I normally see. Even though, again, it definitely needs a little bit of cleaning, which I am quite frankly scared to do. But I mean, you can see that like someone put a lot of effort into all the tiny little details here. And it's it's old, yes, and definitely a little bit beat up, but the colors are still kind of nice. And I think that the, the sea or whatever, the little waves and everything were done very nicely. Um, Basically, when I saw this and I picked it up and I held it, I thought, you know what, this is definitely something kind of good. This is something that someone cared about. And that's really enough for me to kind of decide that, yeah, okay, I want to get it. Now, we do also have the hole. What's the deal with the hole, Claire? Because <laughs> this is obviously a vase. Why would someone drill a hole through a vase? Um, I'll tell you what, this, this was almost certainly a regular vase and someone drilled a hole in it in order to turn it into a lamp. Um, I have, seen, I don't think I've seen this specifically with individual vases, but I've definitely seen vases that have been turned into lamps. And essentially what they do is that they drill that hole through the bottom just for the lead to come out. And I, I think that in this case, because that's a little bit too flat, they probably sit it on a little pedestal or something. The idea being that like they take the lamp part, feed the wires in here, comes out here, um, it's on the stand or whatever, and then the lead obviously goes off and gets plugged in. And the lamp part will sit in the mouth of the vase here. And I think that in this case, they probably just didn't get around to finishing it because the only thing that's here is the hole. And that's obviously not something that you'd leave there. Now, the unfortunate thing in this case is that we kind of don't really have any more information. Like it says made in Japan here, but maybe there might've been another mark, but the other mark is pretty much gone. I just don't know. There is also a possibility that this was essentially made to be 
I'm going to stop knocking the camera, that this might have actually been made to be a lamp, but it just never got turned into a lamp. But generally, if it's manufactured to be a lamp, it would actually be an actual lamp, and this wouldn't look less like a vase and more like an actual lamp. Like, I'm pretty sure this is a vase that someone was converting and just never got around to doing it. Now, that said, it is a decorative thing. It's not like you're going to be putting, like, you're probably not going to be putting stuff into this. I don't think this would work if you were putting flowers into it, for example. I think it is something that's meant to just stand and sit in its own and be kind of nice. I don't think you're going to be, like, wanting to put water into it and stick it like a flower arrangement. It's not that kind of vase. So the fact that it's got a hole in it, maybe not the end of the world. But anyway, considering what we've got in front of us, can we tell anything actually about it? It turns out that, in fact, we can. Even though all it says is made in Japan, by the way. So first thing is, is do we actually know who made it? And that's kind of the million dollar question, to be honest, but we sort of do. So here's an example. That looks quite familiar, doesn't it? And it's listed here as Moriyama. Moriyama, Morimachi Porcelain Vase Japan Pagoda Bajan, you know, just the usual kind of keyword word salad or whatever. So, no, that's not Moriyama, going to the wrong place. Here we go. So who's Moriyama? Moriyama Pottery was located in Morimaki in the Shizuoka, Shizuoka Prefecture. And once again, I'm very sorry, I can't pronounce non-English names very well. I'm do I promise I'm trying my best. So, Moriyama Pottery was established in 1911 uh, by Hidekichi Nakamura, who was taught pottery making by Seison Suzuki. And so this is basically, a, they're, they're still around today, but they've been in business for a very long time. And there, there's a list here of the marks here. And, and here's the thing. None of these marks show up here on this thing. You can see that the mark here is very distinctive, okay? And they definitely did moriage of this style. And this looks very much like ours, but like, what do we think? Well, let's just take a quick look here. I mean, it definitely looks the business. You can see that the style looks, it looks very similar. It's possibly not the same artist but in the same vein. But anyway, do we have a mark on this? Oh yeah, you can see, obviously, <laughs> we have the same elements or whatever, the little, the little uh, we've got the same, obviously the same gold ring, the same color. The color is identical, which is, I think is very important. The, the waves and everything are the same. The little islands are the same. Now, here's the mark, hand-painted Japan. And if we know from looking at Gothenburg, that if it says hand-painted Japan, it's probably in 1920s or 1930s. This one, just says made in Japan and nothing else. Do we have any idea if that's going to help us at all? Can we actually attribute this to Moriyama? And the answer to that is that I'm not entirely sure. So I'm going to tell you guys my best guess, okay? The made in Japan mark, right? So as we all know, 1891, McKinley Tariff Act was, enact it was, in was in instated. Items important to the United States. And to be honest, it's probably going to apply to Canada because a lot of stuff that comes in, for it'll come in for the North American market in general. So it'll just follow the US rules. So it's important to the United States. They had to be marked in English with the country of origin. And obviously the name Nippon was chosen from items coming from Japan. And that kind of changed in 1921. The official country of origin name requirement was changed to Japan. So we have a defined time period, 1891 to 1921, which bears more Nippon. But there's more to this. During the period 1921 to 1941, porcelain should be marked Japan. Roughly after 1941, they were marked made in Japan, though numerous exceptions appear to occur. Now that's, that's kind of interesting. Pieces marked with Japan are made in Japan in plain text without any company marks. In general, this is the period immediately after the Second World War. And some come with the addition of Occupied Japan. Now that's kind of interesting. That means that, like, considering the almost identical look and feel to this one that we've got here that actually has a Moriyama mark on it, and I did actually look around, there are a bunch of these vases around the place that have the Moriyama mark. This is the only one I can find that doesn't. And it just says Made in Japan. So based on what Gothenburg is saying, and I'm pretty sure that Gothenburg is kind of reliable, my best guess is that this is produced just after the end of the Second World War. And for whatever reason, all it's got is made in Japan. That's it. It never got the actual mark of Moriyama. And to be honest, that's not even a very good guess. It's just 
you know, going based on likelihood, because I've seen a few of these. Uh, I'm gonna, here you go. Now, a lot of them are listed, like they always say Moriyama, Morimaki, Moriage, and then to be honest, it looks that's, that's more keyword soup as far as I can tell. But these styles show up quite frequently and they're so similar. Like the, the, the all the little style patterns, you can see that little the little house. Well, well, well I'm not, what I'm calling a lighthouse, which is probably not a lighthouse, let's be honest here. But you can see that it's almost exactly the same. Like it's got all the same elements. Like <laughs> you got to say, if it's a copy, it's a damn good one. They've gotten it just really accurate. But yeah, we do have a couple of examples that we can look at for reference. Here's another one. Again, similar kind of style. Uh, I'll try to show you. This is actually a whole set of them here. You can see that they definitely had a thing going on. I can, I can suspect that this is like a, a consistent pattern that was just like produced for a number of years. And this one is Mori Yama Mori Maki Mori Age Oval Dish Bowl and Two Earn Chalice Face Peach Luster Wear Inside Perry. Yeah, so there's a lot. Let's just say there's a lot going on there. There is, yeah, a lot going on there. <laughs> okay, so can we say anything else here? Now, I did actually want to just mention about Mori Age. All right, and this is just the style that shows up here. This here, this stuff here is clay. It's called slip. And essentially they build it up in layers and then fire it on and like do their painting or whatever. And it's very well known for being this like Japanese thing in the mid 20th, like in, in like the early mid 20th century, which is why I kind of always look for it. And normally when I see it, it's dragonware. So I'm gonna put some links down in the description if you wanna find out a bit more about Moriage from Gothenburg. But I thought I'd show you this as well. This is dragonware. Basically, it's moriage except with these dragon, these dragons all over the place. This, by the way, is a particularly nice one. They basically draw on these lovely kind of sinewy, coiled dragons all over the place with the slip. Lovely, lovely effect. But the point, <laughs> but the problem is, is that it has to be done well. And I have, to date, not really seen it done well. Here's another example. This is kind of, this is kind of okay. I kind of, you know, it's all right. Here's another one. I have seen a few examples of, I think, a teacups and I think maybe one other vase. And if it's done dragonware, it's usually like this. There's like these darker, it's a gradient, it's always dark, light, dark, and it's got the dragon in the middle. You can it's usually like these pastel colors. It's got pinks, it's got the blues. Um, usually when I see them, they're either in very, very bad condition or it's just incredibly rubbish. It's another, like, it's a real issue or whatever, like just, I see apparently a lot of cheap stuff, but yeah, I, I don't think I've seen any kind of dragon or moriage piece that I would actually be want, that would I would actually want to pick up. I just, I, I've looked at it and go like, oh no, that just, it doesn't look like it was done well, or it looks like it was half-assed, or it just, there's bits knocked off it all over the place. It's a real shame, but yeah, what are you gonna do? So anyway, based on all that, like what we can actually say about this, our best guess, Moriyama. Not marked with the Moriyama, but end of World War II. Kind of in that time zone, possibly. We're not 100% sure, but based on what it is, what it's actually worth. Now, our best case scenario is that it is actually, it is actually Moriyama. But if that's the case, is Moriyama actually selling? And kind of the, the long story short is that it really isn't. There is quite a lot of it here. There's some very nice examples here. I'm just gonna scroll up. There's 32 like different pieces. And you can see, here we go. Here is our, here's our vases again. Direct copy of ours. But what have we got for sold items? And the answer is basically nothing. And I can't really find anything comparable for specifically for their Moriage stuff. Um, I can definitely see that some of their very nice pieces are sell for quite nice money, but the rest of it, no, they don't really sell a lot. And it's very clear that this particular vase is not something kind of special. It's something that they just may probably made quite a lot of. And they did it, I have to say the execution is good, but like the, it's something being well-made doesn't necessarily mean it's rare or valuable. So based on what I can find, it's probably not even worth what I paid for. I paid $6 for it. I think, you know, for the right, for someone who kind of likes this kind of stuff, yeah, I mean, $6 is a great price. I will probably put it up on Etsy. I'll sell it for maybe 10 to 15, 10 to 15 plus whatever it costs to ship. It's probably not going to be too much. It's kind of light. 
you know, maybe someone would like it. I still think it's pretty nice. So there you go. If you do see Moriage pieces in the thrift store, definitely check them over to see if they're and like how much damage they have or they in good condition. Like, and try not to pick up ones that look that, that look like they were badly done. You want to kind of save it and look for ones that look like they were executed well, or they're just kind of plain interesting. This one is just like islands. <laughs> or if you see particularly a nice dragon, still waiting for that. So this is my small joyful thing for the day. Hope you guys like it as well. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.